Right, you guys got another video here for you on how to build a mini PC with a Raspberry Pi. We're going to be using this mini tower kit from 5.2PI. Now they've got a couple of different ones. They've got a NAS version, which is a black version that has the availability to put an SSD at the bottom. And then we have this version. Now what you get inside the kit is everything you see here, apart from the Raspberry Pi 4, which you have to purchase separately, and also the SD card there which is your micro SD card, you have to purchase that. But everything else you'll get in the kit. So I've already got this Raspberry Pi 4, which I've used already. So I'm going to go ahead and use it in this project. But you can pick these up pretty cheap. I'll leave some links in the video description. It does have the Ice Tower CPU cooling fan in here, which gives you great cooling for this particular little PC. So that comes in the kit. And these are pretty straightforward to put on. But if you've never used one of these or seen one of these, these are awesome for Raspberry Pis. Now you also get the bracket system. This is for the mounted bracket, so you can mount it on the Raspberry Pi. You get your screws and your thermal pads uh, for the cooling. And we also have two um, acrylic covers here for the sides. They do come up clear. I'll show you a clear one so you can get an idea like this. So they do look very clear once you pull the covering off. Now I've got the micro SD card here, which I've added in. You don't get this in the kit, but you can pick these up cheap. I've also got the edge extender here for your GPIO. And we also have the actual uh, ABS mini tower case here. Now the previous versions of this wasn't that great, um, but you can see here we do have inside here a 0.96 inch OLED display, 12C uh, protocol on this one. Now the OLED display doesn't come pre-installed like this one. Uh, they've uh, pre-installed it in here for me for some reason. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty straightforward to install. I've done one of these before, but they have pre-installed it up the top. There. You can see it just clips in up the top here. We do have some anti-slip rubber feet, and uh, we also have uh, a connector up here for the fan. I'll show you how to set this up. It's pretty straightforward stuff. And a cable wall route up here, and you can see it's fixed in up the top. But pretty straightforward stuff, and you've got the user manual here to tell you exactly how to do things. It's all color pictures and English text in here, but pretty self-explanatory. Now the previous generations of this were 3D printed out as well, which weren't that great to be honest, and the design needed some work. But I do like when companies actually listen to people and actually go away and improve on their previous uh, generations of this. And you can see this one was pretty poor, the one they sent me before, and I didn't do a video on it because I don't think it would have interested people when it was in this state. But this is the NAS version there, so pretty decent. And uh, again, this version now is pretty decent uh, compared to the previous uh, generations, as you'll see in this video. Now there is a wiki that they've got set up here with some information and photographs, which makes it pretty easy to follow. And you can see everything you've got in the kit here. I'll leave the link in the video description for you. Uh, but yeah, this version here is a pretty nice version. The OLED display uh, needs a few codes to be put in, so you don't have that pre-done for you. So you will need to do some code inside the terminal, uh, but it is a pretty straightforward and it is all listed on here as well. As you can see here, you just copy and paste these codes in and you will have your... Okay, so let's start off with the cooler and get the mounting bracket on here. There's one screw that holds it into position and you just... Uh, put it into position here there is a little cutout which means it uh, sits right up onto the little aluminium block here and then you need to get a screw and tighten this in and uh, these can be a bit fiddly so if you've got a magnetic screwdriver that would be really useful they do give you a little tiny screwdriver but it's not the greatest and uh, makes it a little bit more difficult but once you get uh, it screwed down it should be pretty good so let me go ahead and uh, tighten this down there we go and all you need to do is repeat the other side. They do need to go on a certain way. So look at the diagram and uh, make sure you've got this on the right way. And there you go. It should move a little bit like that. This gives you a little bit of play so you can actually mount it onto the board itself. So we need to get one more screw and we need to do this next bracket. And you can see the little cutout here. So it only goes one way here. And I'm just going to put this on. And then we can line this up and get this screwed down. And once we've got this done, we can then move on to the next part. I'm just going to tighten this off. There we go. And that's now done. And you can see there's one little copper pipe along there, which will help keep the Raspberry Pi nice and cool. 
But that is it right there. Pretty nice little caller. It does have even RGB on here, believe it or not. And it's just got one little connector which will connect up onto that LCD up the top there, which I'll show you a bit later on. Okay, so let's move on to the next step, uh, which is uh, getting it mounted to the board here. So we need to put some thermal pads on the board. So what we're trying to do here is cover the CPU with the thermal pad, and we want to also do the GPU and the DRAM as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these on. There's one right here, a bit fiddly. And then we need to do the one behind there. And then we need to do the one at the back. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's just line these up. They do come with a little plastic coating on them, so you will need to remove those from there. And then once you uh, remove the plastic coating, they should be in position like this. And then once this is done, now we're ready to move on to the next step. And here we have that nice little cooler here. Really do like this little cooler. It does a really good job and uh, keeps the Raspberry Pi nice and cool, which means we can overclock it a little bit. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is take a quick look at the cooler here because we need to get the cooler mounted to the board and also mount it inside the actual case here. So let me go ahead and remove these four screws. This holds the little plastic bottom part in to the actual case here, which makes mounting things a lot more easier. So the previous generation never did this and it was a bit of a, a faff to get it in, but this one is a lot more easier. So let me just go ahead and remove these four screws here. And that will then give us access to this little plastic bit. So let's pull this out. There we go. And what we can do now is uh, mount the Raspberry Pi 4 and also we're going to mount the cooler on here. So I've just rested the cooler on top here and then we're going to rest it on top of the bottom plastic part. Make sure you get this round the right way. And uh, once you've got this done, we can then screw down the top part to put the cooler on top. And then we can also screw at the bottom to uh, hold the board to the actual plastic um, mounting part here. So let's go ahead and get this into position. I'm just lining this up. Now there's some little holes here. And then you just push through here with your screws and then tighten this up. Now once you've done these, the plastic part will be mounted to the board, but then we need to also tie down uh, the cooler itself. So I'm just gonna drop those into the hole and then tighten these up. Very straightforward stuff. And there's four of these to do, and uh, you don't wanna tighten these all the way down straight away because you wanna line up the holes to make sure you can um, marry them up a little bit to get them into the bottom part. So that's now tied down. So what we need to do is screw down the cooler. Now you could have done it the other way around, whatever way suits you. It would probably be better to do it the other way around, but it still worked out okay. And what I'm gonna do now is screw down the four screws to hold this into position here. So there's four little bracket screws we need to put in here. And once we've got this done, we can then put it back into the case. So that's now all done. And you can see here, we now have it all mounted onto the plastic case bottom part here. I don't know what we're gonna call that, but we're both gonna stick with that. And then we're gonna get this put into the actual uh, case. Now you can see, make sure that plastic lip there is on the side of the connectors here. Otherwise you won't have it round the right way. I only think it goes in one way, but just in case. And then all we need to do is hold it into position and tighten down the four screws, which we took out previously. And uh, once we've done this, this will be now mounted inside of the case itself. Okay, so that's all now done. And we need to now put the GPIO edge extender here so we can get access to this from outside of the case. So just push this onto the GPIO connectors here and push it down. It will be very stiff. They do have to give it a little bit of force, but once it's all the way down, you want them pins to sit all the way down onto the bottom. So it sits just right with the holes on the plastic perspex here. Now this is the fan connector. This goes up to the top here. And this was a really fiddly job if you've got big hands, but I managed to get it in there. A pair of tweezers might be useful uh, to push that in there. A long pair of forceps or something like that. So that's now done. And all we need to do now is push in the connector for the OLED display here onto the uh, GPIO. 
connectors and that can go inside not on the outside and that frees up a load of pins on the outside if you need them and we have now got a finished result here all we need to do is put the side panels on i think this looks absolutely awesome it really does and uh, all i need to do now is pull off the inside perspex cover here so when we screw it down um, it will basically be already removed from the inside because there's two coatings one on the inside one on the outside so let's just screw these down once this is done we'll have two of these panels on and then what we can do is you can create your bootable image for your micro sd card slot and then put it into the slot and basically boot to it and you'll have a, a cool little operating system on here i'll show you that part in a second let me just finish screwing these down and then we can move on to the finished result and uh, let's take a look at it there we go that is the end result looks pretty cool if you ask me and uh you can use this for many different projects and uh, these are really cool little devices a good little project and of course you would have to put the operating system on here and then you could boot to it and then you could set up your tiny little banana man here jumping up and down and the rolling bars you can see going up on the screen is from my camera there are the uh, something to do with the hertz that it's using will show the bars going up on the screen but other than that you can also set the uh, OLED display to display your temperatures and other things like that as well uh, with a few commands I'll leave the link in the video description if you're looking for a little Raspberry Pi uh, project here so a nice little kit anyway that is going to be about it for this video my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who have joined my YouTube members group I really do appreciate the support and a special shout out to Ron Hicks Casso Time Big Daddy Gary Belts, Mike Bigness, PC Repair Tech, Albert Houston, Jedi Buddhist, Geo Sam, and Welsh Tony One. I shall catch you in the next video. Bye for now.